At 9.32 a.m., they rode skyward on a flying volcano. Seven and a half million pounds of thrust. That's one small step for man. My name is Humberto Hernandez, and I'm an aerospace engineer at NASA. I'm from El Paso, Texas. I grew up there, and I've stayed in school in El Paso at uh, UTEP, uh, University of Texas at El Paso. El Paso is a big city, but not as big as Houston. And moving here I kind of felt a little overwhelmed. And where NASA is, where Johnson Space Center is, it's more a little bit out in the suburbs, but you still have that Houston feel. And it's great for aerospace. Houston's very heavy on engineers. It's a good thing because there's a lot of very smart people around Johnson Space Center and then even around Houston. This is Mission Control. This is the first mission control that controlled all the Gemini, Apollo, and Space Shuttle missions. There's been a lot of influential people within NASA that have worked here. So I'm sitting right now where very important people sat, including Gene Krantz and Chris Kraft, famous call from Apollo 13. Okay, Houston, we've had a problem here. Houston, we have a problem, came across here, and pretty much the flight director they run the whole mission, they're in charge of the whole mission, even have a direct line, sometimes even to the president, something important has happened. It's almost to the sense overwhelming how much happened in here, especially first images where we landed on the moon. Here, man, from the planet Earth, first set foot upon the moon. It's a nice feeling to be working in a place where this is just around the corner in another building. We're currently in the active mission control room for the International Space Station. All the missions get controlled here for the space station, and this room is always staffed 24 hours a day. There's always people here uh, caring about every system, power, control, navigation, tracking debris. There's a lot of important things that happen here, and very smart people that are staffed that control the space station, that way the astronauts can focus on science that happens up in space. Hey, I'm how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good, I'm James Tinch, I'm the VR lab manager here. And so today what we're planning on doing is giving you a feel of what it's like to handle a large mass while you're in space, while you're in micro G, awesome. while you're free falling, okay? So what we got here, and this is the setup we have, is you'll be the EV crew member, the EVA crew member, extravehicular activity. And what you'll be handling is this big escant uh, spare part. In other words, if the one on the space station dies and somebody has to replace it, they'll come over here, take this, and put it on where the old one was. Take the old one, put it here. When we put you in the helmet, you'll see the object here that you're going to be wrestling with, and then what you're really wrestling with that robot. Okay. So virtually, you'll see the payload, but in essence, you'll be uh, kind of guiding that robot onto the mechanism. OK, you ready? Yeah. OK, cool. Grab these two handrails. Oh, wow. Bring the right side down. OK, it looks good. Keep coming, and then push the back down. OK. That looks good. Right there. OK, we got you latched. Cool. How would you like that experience? That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Once you got the hang of it, Makes sense. It's a little easier, yeah. But yeah. It's, it's tough to get the hang of it at first. And... Oh, yeah. We are in Building 9. This area has all the mock-ups that the astronauts train in. We're standing right in front of the International Space Station mock-ups. First module that we have here is the first module that got sent up, which is the FGB. And right after it is the service module. Crew there inside the cupola of the space station monitoring the Dragon's approach. I feel living in space would be such an amazing thing to do. I don't think everyone understands that there's always people in space now, and that's been going on for since 2000. So we're currently in Building 220. This is the home for Project Morpheus. It's a vertical test bed. It's more of a lander type test bed that uses green propellants green being liquid oxygen and liquid methane. I call them green because they burn cleanly. Right behind me is the vehicle. It's got four different tanks and engine right in the middle. And 
here's the engine. The engine produces around 5,200 pounds of thrust and its next mission is to fly as high as 250 meters and it's got a sensor package which will scan a area that we have out at the shuttle landing facility and it will scan this area with its sensors and determine the best place to land and it will guide it in that direction and it will land. Eventually you'd like to get a lander with liquid oxygen, liquid methane either to a moon or Mars or even an asteroid. One of my favorite quotes on the side of the Saturn V building on one of the billboards and it's when we left the moon and the fact that we haven't been there in such a long time or even explored other areas with people on board. It's just the fact that we're working towards going somewhere, either an asteroid or the moon or going to Mars and sending people on board. It's something that I really look forward to and hopefully be a part of either through design or through the operations, it'd be something very neat to, to look at and explore.